Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles, and we got another rack video. You're all like, probably like, fuck, really? This is like the fifth one in a row. One, two, three. Fifth one in a row. Uh, we mixed in some other stuff by now, I'm sure. But here's the thing. We want to share all these with you so you know exactly what we're doing in our plans. I think it's kind of cool, too, because you get to see a lot of snakes. So here we go. Same thing, though. Some of these are going to be locked up, so I won't be able to show them all to you. We're just going to kind of take a peek and go from there. But if they're not locked, I will show you the male as well as the female. So let's get started. This is the last rack on this wall, but not the last rack of breeders we have. This top one, I already know what's going on in here because I checked earlier. Oh, yeah. So, uh. That is uh, like a little beyond like you know what you find on HBO late at night. So we have a pastel lesser desert ghost het clown being bred to a known, a known het clown het caramel. So what we can make here, and again, the caramel is not something that is a byproduct. We don't really care about it. We don't want it. I'm not advocating doing caramels, but it's here, so I'm going to let you know it's here. You're going to end up with uh, het desert ghost. Okay, for sure. That's going to be there. You're going to end up with a good chance of either Het Clown or Het Cryptic. You're also going to end up with Kryptons. And everything has a 50% chance of being Het Caramel as well. So there's a 66% chance of it being either Het, Het Krypton or Clown. Okay, 66% chance one of those two is in there. The way we get that is you're going to have four things that can happen. Het Clown, Het Krypton, Het Neither... Visual Krypton. We'll see the Visual Kryptons. Take that out. Leaves you three. So there's two chances of it being het. 66% chance one of those genes in there. 100% chance on the Desert Ghost. You got Pastel Lesser swimming around. 50% chance on the Caramel. So really, really kind of cool clutch. Uh, obviously, the, the big prize there is getting the Kryptons, right? Below that, we have this one. They're courting, so I can't pull them out. This is honestly... Honestly, kind of a, what are we going to do with it, Clutch? As we were setting through, we needed to find something to do. And so we were just trying to avoid making normals. This is a Het Clown. 50% chance of being Het Caramel. So every baby's got a chance of being Het Clown. So you're probably saying, okay, dipshit, why didn't you throw a clown to that? We're going to get clowns Het Clowns. Really simple. My clown male is already overworked. We limit how many females are going to go to. He had reached his maximum. I'm not going to overbreed that male and risk his health just to get a couple more clowns. Not fucking worth it. Don't do that. Put your animals first above your dollars. So what we threw here is an onyx. Onyx is a black pastel het red exanthic. It's an allelic combo. Basically on here we kind of said, you know what? We don't want to make just a bunch of pos het normal stuff. So this will all be at least a single gene pos het. But not a lot going on there. Then below that... Hey, I can show you two off. Yeah. This one does have a little bit of shed on it. I'm still working on getting off. It's a little bit dry around here. But this is a pastel leopard. It's a little bit of stuck shed. So I'm not going to keep her out too long. We need to give her a bath. As you can see, it's going to happen at time to time. It is ready to come off. No problem. Uh, pastel leopard. And you can see where that shed is. Difference in color. And she is being bred to our male banana. Who's right here. Who is not doing anything. He's just kind of hanging out. That's why we get both of them out. Just a really nice, simple male banana. This guy's probably six or seven years old at this point. Eight or nine years old at this point. I'm not really sure. Somewhere in there. Uh, he's been a good breeder for us. I'm pretty sure he'll get the job done again. As you can see, he's got all the spots. His colors are still pretty good for an old banana, but not like the Toffinos we show you. That's why I really like the Toffinos and how they hold colors. He's going to hopefully get that done. We want to bring in that leopard. I don't really care about the pastel. The pastel is just kind of one of those things that happens to be there in this case. Um, I'm, whoop, <laughs> sorry, buddy. Uh, the pastel banana is not my thing. I like to darken my banana. So what we're really hoping there is to bring the leopard into our banana projects and avoid the pastel. Same with pastel, probably won't part with. But the leopard banana I can then use to do other things with. So kind of cool there. Down here, we've got a, another recessive clutch. What we have is a lesser uh, ghost uh, being bred to, come here, buddy, or girly. And of course, she's not being bred right now. The male's off elsewhere, so I can pull her out for you. So this is a lesser ghost. Now, this is a, one of the best ways I think you can use ghost. Ghost is a very underrated, very beautiful gene on its own right. The lesser gives us things. It's just a really nice overall finish. Uh, almost a shine to it, I guess. I don't know how else to explain it. They just kind of glow be the best way to talk about these things. So I really, really dig these lesser ghosts. Now, with what we're doing there, everything will be ghost. 
from it. Since our male has another copy of Lesser, we could actually make Bell Ghost. And I know in a lot of other clutches, you heard me say, ah, hell, I'm not keeping any of those bells we're making. If we make that bell, I'm not keeping it. I got other things going on if I wanted to do that. That's one of them. If we can hit a ghost bell, and we'll know it's ghost because both breeders are ghosts. I don't have to look at the bell and go, man, I wonder if it's ghost. It's ghost, okay? So if we get the bell here, there's a very good chance we, we keep that because I know then I can pass on ghost everything and also lesser to everything. And lesser ghost, along with some inching and some other things we put into it, just, oh, it's just, it's just beautiful. So I really like that. Below that, whoa, hey now, what are we doing? Really? You're going to be that way? You're going to be all bitey. Why are we all bitey? Let's well, stop that. Bad behavior. You're not getting fed. Knock that shit off. So a little trick here. When you get one like that, she's a little on the hungry side. We just kind of tap her down. When she realizes we're not feeding her, hopefully she'll relax and be good. You're going to be good now? This is just a big old girl here. A big old... Uh, single gene pastel, right? See, our attitude's totally changed now. Um, once she realizes food's not coming in, she's going to be just fine. She's hungry. She wants to pack on weight. She wants to get ready for a good breeding season, which is a really good sign. I actually like seeing my females be that way this time of year, and my males for that matter. Yeah, I do. Uh, but just when you've got ones that you know are going to feed well, be a little careful when you go to open that tub. As you can see, she's got no interest in biting me now. So she is also being paired to our onyx. And again, we're just trying to make some simple combos and avoid normals on that. And with using the onyx, we're going to get at least a uh, black pastel or het red exanthic in there. I really like pewters. I think they're cool. They don't get made that often anymore because it's kind of that old school thing, right? Sometimes I like doing the old school stuff. So that's what we're going to work towards there. A little black pastel pastel. Make some cool looking pewters just to kind of part with. Below that. Let's see if this one's going to be just the same way. Hey, you kind of are, aren't you? These are all kind of biting in here. You're fine, girly. You're fine. So this is a really cool snake. This is a black pastel uh, spider. And what we're pairing to that is also going to be the straight banana. So the same banana you just saw, just saw is going to go here. The reason for that is I really like banana spiders. I really like what banana black pastel does, bringing out the darker purples and even adding in some of those spotting. I really don't like a lot of extra spotting, but I really like the darker purples. Spider bananas have always looked really, really, really good. Uh, so by bringing those two in, I think we can make some really cool spider banana combos. Just some, again, this is a, a chance to make really pretty beautiful snakes is what we're working on there. Right, girly? Yes, it is. Oh, come on. Get in there. Get in there. There you go. There you go. And oh, this one's going to be a really cool one as well. So this is a simple Mojave. It is 100% Het Desert Ghost. 50% chance of being Het Ghost. Look how bright that thing looks. I think this is going to prove out for the Het Ghost just based on on the overall brightness of it. Really, really cool animal, right? We're gonna be putting that to the Pastel Lesser Desert Ghost Het Cryptic. So what we're going to hopefully get is proving out the Desert Ghost. It's supposed to be 100% Het. I got no doubt that it is. We'll get that proven out. The problem is, when I bought my mail, one thing I didn't think of, because I was just excited to find the mail, was uh, we could make bells in this clutch. And of all the bells I wanna make this year, this is the one clutch I really don't want to make bells because I'm not going to be able to see the desert ghost in there. So that tells me I'm probably going to make four out of six eggs bell uh, because that's just the way shit goes. But if you're ever going to buy something for you Patreon members on there, taking a flyer on it, the bells will be at minimum head desert ghost and a good chance they're visual. So this would be the one to take a flyer on because I screwed the pooch and didn't plan my breeding pair very well. My screw up could be extra bonus for you because all I'll be able to really sell those bells as is 100% Het Desert Ghost, which really kind of sucks because, you know, if you get two of them, one of them's probably visual. I'm not sure if there's a way to tell. Do know I'm gonna try to find a way to tell if there's an accurate way and use it, but if not, sell them as what I know they are. And if they're more than that, you know what, lucky you. It's kind of how that's gonna work making noise so that's a male we're not breeding him and can we see him now? no 
No, we're not even going to see him. Actually, for those of you members on Patreon, I'm going to tell you why that male is not being bred. As a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you why that male will never be bred again. He pissed me off. He, there's a whole song on that. But no, he didn't make me mad. But his breeding days are over. As sad as that is, and we'll tell you that story on Patreon. So if you're not a member, make sure and sign up. Below that, we have a Super Mojave. Hi, girly. Oh, yeah. Super Mojave. In-house produced. One of the differences in the Super Mojave versus the Super Lesser Bells is every talks about these being all white snakes. It's kind of bullshit. They're really not. Your Super Lesser, your Super Russo, those are all white snakes. Your Super Mojave is going to be born pretty white, but it's really more of a bone color than it is a true white color, meaning there's this kind of pale overtone to it. Hey, you. You're not being fed today. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's knock that shit off. Come on, change your behavior. Change your behavior. You also get this really cool purpley gray head. Really? Is that how we're going to play this game? So, really cool snake. I really dig these. We are going to be... Okay, we'll put you away because you're in full-blown freak out. Oh, don't get stuck there. Come on. You don't even need a hook, but we're going to just use it because it's in my hand. Make you more comfortable. Sometimes that's about making the snake more comfortable, not you. Uh, so this one's run away and I just happen to have it there for a nose booping. We're going to pair that one to our Mystic Potion. So the point of that is, in all of our travels, we've always screwed the pooch making Mystic Potions. It's one of the things we really wanted to make early on. So we made this snake years ago, raised it up, just to make Mystic Potions. So we put the Mystic Potion to it, we will make only two kinds of snake. Super uh, Mojaves, like you see there, which is going to be a all white when it's born with a gray head. It's going to turn into a bone color with a gray head. And also Mystic Potions, which has that overall purpley color. I would show you one, but as we established in an earlier video, it's kind of like uh, doing the dirty. And I also say, well, how is it still doing that? Look, all, well, this one I filmed earlier. This one I filmed earlier. You've already seen it. This one, this one, and this one really filmed the same day. So if one was breeding when I you saw clutch rack number three, it's still breeding when you see rack number five. So there is that one, which is really, really cool. The last one in this rack is going to be... Way down here. Ugh. And this one's a cool snake because it's in-house produced as well. And this is a killer bee, 100% head, exanthic. And I knew it was head exanthic because I made it. She did go for us for the first time last year. It has been proven out. I want you to really look. And again, I know I've talked about one of the best things about being a snake breeder is you get to hold back the very, very best, right? Nobody gets to keep, like, nobody's going to come and buy my best snake. I get to pick it. They can kiss my rosy red ass. I go first. That's how this works. Look at the way this animal has held color for a killer bee. It's amazing. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. You're going to be hard-pressed to find a better color-holding killer bee than this. Now, she doesn't necessarily show our uh, deletion of all the patterns through here. Killer bees will not show that as much as a traditional bumblebee. It just brings out more when you add that extra copy of pastel in there. But she was hand-picked for how bright her yellow is, how well it's held, because her being head exanthic and being bred to a pastel exanthic, we are working on making very nice, very high-end uh, killer bee exanthics. That's the goal here, and she is just a queen to do it. Trust me, I've seen her babies. They are amazing, and they're not amazing because I threw two snakes together. And that's where I think some of you folks in this hobby uh, will fail yourselves, okay? It's not just throwing two snakes together to make really amazing animals. You can make amazing combos that way with five and six genes and whatnot, but if you're really wanting to make a truly great expression of what you're working on, the trick is not to start, I know this is mind blowing, not to start with snake A and snake B, okay? Because you're never getting the best, the breeder kept that most of the time. So start with the parts, make it. Make the project on the things you're really passionate about. If you're just wanting to make something because you want to have like that clown combo, then just buy the parts and just do that. That's okay. But here we started smaller. We made these, held back the very best one, used one from a different line to breed back to it to make screaming examples of what this snake can do. The only unfortunate thing with her this year, if memory serves, when we bred her, we did not hit the visual odds really well. I think we only got one or two visuals. But let me tell you, the ones we got were top, top quality. So I know that ability. And it's, so, it's such a moment of extreme pride when you do that because you put in the work for all this time, you know. And your eye for holding back the, the best for your project 
shine through uh, on the day you get to open those eggs and see them crawl out. So I would always recommend people have a few projects like that. It's just, it's just this guy, and that's one of the reasons why I really, really love this snake, because she is the perfect killer bee het if you want to make outstanding visual killer bees. I think it's easier, another thing on that project, I think it's easier to see that with an eye when you're running the head than it is a visual because you can see the trick to getting a really nice, nice killer bee is going to be how much of this is bright yellow because you're going to strip that yellow color. That's just going to give you your nice white and light gray and contrast. So when you can see that coloration in this animal, I know her babies are going to age well. And I know that my customers are going to be damn happy with what they get that came out of her. So that's just my little thing there. My little uh, sales pitch on why we do things the way we do it. And why I would put those animals up against anybody. Um, and anybody that makes high quality things like that, whether it's, you know, John from uh, JD Constriction, I'm working his Exantic line. Or whether it's, um, you know, Justin Koblake, Justin Koblake, JKR, Canova, or the fuck we're calling it these days. If you look, they're not, you know, J. Carr didn't just go buy a clown and a red stripe, okay? He worked those lines to get to the things that he has that are top notch. He did that over time. And that is a big part of the key and a part of the, the overall secret sauce for any of us, I feel like. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he'll come on here, which he's not going to do, and comment and say, Nah, I went to a flea market, bought two snakes and threw them together and some cool shit happened. I guarantee you that's not what happened. He put the time in. Raising up his own heads, raising up his own things, starting 15, 20 years ago. I don't remember how long ago he started, a long time ago, to get to that high quality. So if you aspire to be that high quality, holding back the best on your projects and not cheating not cheating the path is one of the ways you're going to do that. All right, I was the last one to show you. I should tell you again, she's going to a pastel Xantic who's also currently, uh, you know, I think, actually I don't think he is. I think I showed him to you earlier in the last video because he wasn't breeding. There you go, girly. Put you down there. Close you up. Okay, as is traditional. And Caleb came back today while we were filming this one. So we'll start with him. Caleb, out of rack number five, what one are you most excited about? Probably the Desert Ghost Clutch. The Desert Ghost Clutch. Okay, so the Mojave Desert Ghost, possible head ghost to the Pastel Lizard Desert Ghost at Krypton. Yes. Okay. Again, because you want to make Visual Desert Ghost would be my assumption. Yep. Yeah, we're all really excited to do that here. Uh, you just missed that was on the last one. That was oh, one of the ones yeah. we picked. Or not the last one, the one before that. Somewhere over here. Yeah, the one before that. Kurt, what is your most exciting clutch? And you can't say the same thing he said. We already did a Desert Ghost clutch. You and I both picked it. So, Mystic something new. Version. Bastard. So, uh, this is why I shouldn't go third. I do it to myself, y'all. Because that would have been my pick, too. Because we've just worked so long at it. So, I guess if you take the... Desert Ghost Clutch out, and you take the Mystic Potion Clutch out. What is my favorite one in here? Well, I go last. I'm gonna I'm gonna call out two that were kind of that right back there. Uh, one of them is the one I just showed you because I'm just so excited to see what she can do when I get more visuals from her because of her color. That's gonna be an awesome clutch. Fact is though, we still have to make Killer Bee Exantics, and uh, my God, we've made some Killer Bee Exantics at this point. So I, I mean. That's not going to be kind of, it's going to be kind of old hat, right? And what I'm really excited about because of what it can spell in the future for how we can pair genes together and cheat odds is this lesser ghost to the lesser spider ghost. One thing we won't know is that the spider hits in there. We'll figure it out though, but I would really like to make a bell ghost. Well, that bell ghost is probably going to look just like any other bell you saw. The eye color may be a little more washed out. Uh, and the number of the pattern is going to be, or the shed is going to be patternless. Since Bell has no pattern, that doesn't help you either. But we know it's going to be a visual ghost. So we'll know it's there. That be able to hold that back for a future breeder. I'm really excited about that. So I know I can pass on ghost, and I know I can pass on lesser and everything I do. It feels like I got a cheat code to making some really nice ghost com or some really nice ghost combos down the road. Think about the mimosa stuff we're doing. I can start doing as long as the spider's not there. I can start doing things like lesser uh, champagne. Uh, ghost, you know, with all kinds of shit in there. So I'm really, really excited about that. All right, guys, that is all we got. We're going to slide over to Patreon, tell you what we're going to keep and what we're not, uh, and tell you why that mail is to no longer ever be used. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.